So bacon and eggs walk into a bar and order a beer. And then the bartender comes up to them and says, sorry, we don't serve breakfast here. <laughs> okay, not bad, not bad. Uh, pretty good joke about the uh, breakfast. Anyway, back to HACCP and this is module nine, critical control points. So enjoy the show. Okay, we're going to look at module 9 of the HACCP Intermediate Course, and this is Critical Control Points. So the aim of this uh, lesson is to explain to delegates how to can determine the critical control points. And the learning outcomes, by the end of this unit, delegates will be able to define critical control point, identify CCPs, state why resources must be concentrated at the CCPs, and explain the difference between a critical control point and a control point. Okay, critical control point. Let's have a look at the definition. It's a step in a process at which control can be applied and is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level. Identification of CCPs. Uh, this could be done to the knowledge of team members, scientific information, trade information, decision tree, which we'll look at in a second, based on risk, severity, and the existence of control measures, and codex, uh, states that you must minimize the numbers of CCPs um, at the absolute maximum, no more than about six. Again, depending on the complexity of the business. You don't really want to duplicate the CCPs, uh, because uh, this critical control point <coughs> excuse me, is where you'll be uh, checking the data and you don't want too many areas where you're going to check the data so it will be far too expensive especially from a staffing point of view. Let's have a look at the simplified decision tree as to decide where the CCP is. Uh, we start off with questions. The first one is if I lose control is it likely that food poisoning, injury or harm will result? If the answer is no, it's a control point, which is good hygiene practice. If it's yes, will a subsequent, subsequent step eliminate or reduce the hazard to an acceptable level? If it's yes, again, it's a control point. If it's no, it's a critical control point, or CCP. Let's have a look at the Codex uh, CCP decision tree. Very complicated as far as I'm concerned, uh, but I'll go through it anyway. Again, it starts off with a series of questions. Start with question one. Do control measures already exist? And if the answer is no, question 1A, is control necessary at this step for safety? If the answer is no, it's not a CCP. If the answer to question 1A is yes, then you need to modify the step, process, or product. Now we go back to question 1, so in a cycle, do control measures exist? If the answer is yes to the control measures existing, then you ask question 2, is the step specifically designed to eliminate or reduce the likely occurrence of a hazard to an acceptable level? If the answer is yes, it's a critical control point. If the answer is no, question 3, could contamination with identified hazard or hazards occur in excess of acceptable levels or increase to unacceptable levels? If the answer is no, it's not a critical control point. If it's yes, question 4. So you can see it's quite a complicated process using uh, the codex decision tree rather than the simplified decision tree. So question 4, will a subsequent step eliminate or reduce the hazard to an acceptable level? level. If it's yes, it's not a critical control point. If it's no, it is a critical control point. And if it's not a critical control point, proceed to the next step in the process. Okay, the key points of that uh, quite short section on critical control points. We looked at CCPs. We looked at how to identify CCPs using the various decision trees, the simplified or the 
a more complicated code extreme well, obviously we could learn from team members and scientific knowledge etc and why resources must be concentrated at the CCPs did really mention this but all CCPs need to be monitored uh, now because uh, they are monitored by usually staff uh, it can be quite a, an expensive uh, resource to monitor the CCPs this is why we say not to have more than about half a dozen absolute maximum of CCPs uh, because uh, the concentration of the CCP is to make sure that everything remains within control because once the CCP goes out of control then harm could result i.e. contamination could creep in. Um, the difference between a critical control point and control point uh, the difference between a control point is good hygiene practice but a critical control point is a step in the process where if it goes out of control as I've just mentioned and contamination could result. Thank you for watching our video. Please take a moment to visit our website by clicking on the link below. We'll see you there.